do know, I do not, I do not know where else to ask, so sorry to bother you. I'm a 30 year old man who has never been in a relationship and I'm now scared to seek one, thinking that I will be pathetic. How do I convince my ego that it's okay to be rejected by someone else instead of rejecting myself? Thank you so yeah. much, again, thank but, you so much for, for asking like, us. Like, if you haven't got anywhere else and you came to us, that's what we want. That is, this is why we're here. This is why we're here. I mean, to be fair, it's quite crushy now, but, <laughs> but really, it's yeah. a, Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, and, um, yeah, okay, let's begin. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, I, again, I think we're gonna go through this bit by bit, but, um, mm -hmm. So it seems to me like you've already rejected yourself, you know, you've already taken yourself out of the game because your last sentence was like, how do I allow other people to reject me instead of me rejecting myself? So that's something that you've already done, like you've taken yourself out of market basically. But the fact that you're aware of it is a brilliant first step. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Sorry, I don't give my... <laughs> yes. Um, but it's really good that you're aware of the fact that you're doing this thing. Yeah. And then I want to talk about this particular dynamic of a rejection, okay? Okay. Because um, you, I don't really know how to, because it, okay, so I'm going to put out that. You may think that rejection only happens to people that, um, that care a lot about whether they're going to get rejected or not, and or to people that are, I don't know, what I'm saying is that Jennifer Aniston was rejected. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't sound like it's... But basically, They're rejection waiting. happens to everyone. Oh, shut up. A little bit. It'll pass. It is raining. We can put the volley on your laptop, maybe. Yeah. 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 Probably, yeah. It's only raining a tiny bit. Um... Okay, look. We can I'm put your good. laptop on that chair and then open the brolly. We can't because it needs to be here. We can just like put the brolly here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, sorry, sorry. We will come back to this. Um, just technical thing. Technical thing. It's raining. But again, we're not cutting because it's We're not cutting. Mariam, uh, keep talking yeah, about yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is that rejection happens to everyone. It's just that you haven't experienced it because you haven't put yourself out there, right? So, so rejection is just something that one will just have to deal with once they're out in the market. In the last year, I had like two really brutal rejections and those were towards people that I really cared about and it, it, it sucked. Um, so I really, I really hope that there's a way for, yeah, for you to, to, to basically understand that there is a... Learning to be rejected is an art form and I will say one thing that worries me about talking about rejection in that sort of sense is I'm like, oh, you're just gonna like, oh my god, get over it. <laughs> but why don't you just put the sun thingy though? Because that's attached to this the... Is, this is low production for <laughs> This is what it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna put it on it um, upside down. Fine, good, 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 good. <laughs> oh, do, do we need one for the phone? To be fair, it's not... Oh, it's not uh, raining, hasn't it, obviously? No, I think so, yeah. Okay, okay. good. Look Sorry. at the frame, does it look funny with the umbrella? A little bit. It's alright. Well, look, if it stops completely, we'll... You just toss it to the side. Yeah. Okay, uh, because the natural conclusion where having been rejected uh, too much leads to is that you become that guy, and I'm sorry to say a guy, but like, it just literally... Uh, that, I guess that's all I had to deal with pretty much. It's like that guy that just like tries, 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 gets rejected, doesn't give a shit, doesn't care anymore because they're so desensitized to being rejected. So there's this fine line between learning to be rejected and understanding that it's not about you, it's about where they were in that particular time in their lives. Whether, uh, you know, whether they're probably fancy worse people than you are. <laughs> Like, yeah, if they end up, like, going out with someone who you think is not as Not great attractive as you, at all, that's, and not great as like, yeah, if it fucking happens. Exactly. Like. So, 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 and, and, so basically, going for people, but learning that there is line there. And there is that, the, 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 the dickheads out there, they're like, don't give a shit about being rejected. They just try, try, try. They are being annoying. They're being quite abrasive. Well, not abrasive, I don't know, like. Yeah, pushy. Like, pushy with this. And they basically, they've learned to be rejected so much that they don't give a shit anymore. And, and don't be that guy. So don't be that guy. So basically, I think there is a fine art to the the science of being rejected, and I think some of it you 
there's this I don't know, this is gonna sound really over romantic and that, but there's something to be said about the feeling of exquisite pain, of rejection, that like brings all sorts of creativity and like uh, wanting to be a better person. And like, I think a lot of what I've achieved in my professional life wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't be rejected as well, actually. And so, in a, in a weird way, it has pushed me towards better places. That, um, you know, so well, yeah, because what rejection does is it, it like being rejected either forces you to be like I'm a piece of shit and wallow and be like no one will ever love me, or it will be like I need to realize like you've already acknowledged in your last sentence like you need to realize your self worth is not defined by the person. Also, this person wouldn't make good anyway, or if they were like, but like yeah, to to come out of rejection being like actually I'm fucking great and you know their loss or whatever like yeah it like definitely there's a bit of the wallowing and being like. Well, it's yes, not but... even their loss, but it's just like, I I was never going to be able to make them happy, you know? Yeah, sure, and that's that's okay, because honestly, being in a relationship that sucks is kind of worse than being rejected. Yeah, like, yeah, no, that's really fascinating, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, again, too much information, but whatever, like, I mean, oh, fuck you, you can't know by now. So, um, <laughs> someone that recently very... No, very gallantly to be fair, rejected me, like, all, all power to, you know, um, drove a huge jeep, uh, and, and so that to me was, like, sexy as fuck, and that, and, um, so, you know, I was going through a difficult period of, of rejection and all of that stuff, and then one thing that pulled me out of it completely is learn to drive. So I've learned to drive now, yeah. and, and it's, it's really nice, and basically, um, yeah, I had to go through that terrible flight, and it was dark, Rowan saw me through it, it was dark, <laughs> but um, but at the end of it, I am a better person, so so I completely understand your fear of rejection, and yet, in a way it, that enriches our lives, and makes us better sometimes, not to say, not to completely, not to say that the pain that you feel through it is not yeah. If it's someone you really like and they reject you, that will fucking hurt. We are not saying that won't fucking hurt. And you will cry for a week, two weeks, this, this, you'll do maybe things that are Months, silly. Years. Yeah. But you will, like, I mean, I, I mean, no one got, got rejected, but I mean, essentially got rejected, right? In a, a like. A, but what happened from You're that? You're too good for that. <laughs> yeah, but like essentially something that I really wanted to happen didn't happen and ended up going very wrong for me. And I moved to London. I left the country, moved to London, and I started doing Agony Arts with Marianne. And this, what the thing that lifted me out of that the most is realizing that like with me and the person who I wasn't with, but there was this whole story, uh, did, we were doing a creative project together. And then I started doing a creative project with Mariam instead. And this has been like the best, like, I don't know, what's the word, a uh, rebound. <laughs> but like, you know, like, I, c I came with my own, I found a different project that I wasn't defined by that person or that project I was doing with that person or any of that. Like, I saw that I was capable of doing a multitude of things, one of which is this show, and that was really, But really that's important. not something you see during that period of no. like absolute, you know, all consuming yeah. pain, absolutely. So it's just like, not to over -rom romanticize or like not to not to completely fetishize the bit where you're on the other end of it but just to say that yeah what i think both you and me share is like uh, a rejection has improved our lives yeah yeah but also i want to uh slightly change the subject i feel like the sense of the type of rejection they are talking about is maybe more of the like hitting on someone in a bar and getting rejected like that off the cuff not the not the like I have fallen for this person and they've rejected me thing it sounds like you're scared of even oh like not scared but like anxious about even making a move because that person might knock you back and you know like I want to say fuck it because you you might never see the person again and you should take that risk but I also know that I don't take that risk I don't hit on people because I'm scared of rejection <laughs> so like I guess I'm more desensitized to yeah, you, you are actually. actually. <laughs> I've said this before. Like, I really yeah. admire your ability to like. You flirt Real with someone friend. and you show that you're flirting with them, and you like are putting yourself out there. And like sometimes and then it, they get rejected, it scores, <laughs> and sometimes you get rejected. But if it's not already the like the deep love, I really want to be with this person. Getting rejected, it's kind of like knocks your confidence. But it's also you you pick yourself up and you go yeah. out again the next week. Like yeah, but it's not in a creepy way. <laughs> which and there are plenty of people that are creepy. 
So yeah. one thing that will maybe advise and that's something oh it's annoying though. What's actually amazing? Episode eight, I guess we literally can do that. But something that we ref I think we talked about an episode even one or two is um, I think one place where you would really learn the uh, the the, I don't know, the, ropes. <laughs> the ropes and it's 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 a bondage class. Sorry, that was a crap rope joke. No, this is this is why you were a stand up comedian. That was fucking good. Like that's wonderful. <laughs> because that's just too always to me it's like how much time do you put into something and how many rewards like how much mm -hmm. of a reward it gives me so tinder is fairly like low investment right and and that rejection like kind of doesn't matter because like maybe that person has not logged into the phone for that long so they haven't seen my profile so it literally doesn't care you like you literally don't care yeah and yet this is where the crucial part comes in and now i've actually like I have now looked through quite a few Tinder uh, profiles, and I will say, me, we will offer a, your Tinder profile completely made for you for three hundred pounds, one hundred and fifty each. It's a day's work because we're gonna take you out. So we're gonna take you out. We're gonna make all the photos in all different settings and in all different ways of like structures of the photos and I will advise you on the profile but it's hard it's because we really different things from the Tinder profile right? five but then we you can do five like... pictures or six pictures yeah. so we can totally put that yeah 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 so um <laughs> so basically what I'm saying nah, like, basically yeah. what I'm saying is like I'll look through Tinder it's just it's fucking terrible like it's fucking terrible yeah. Also, it's all just pretty great, terrible pictures. People that could be hot as fuck look terrible on them. And people that actually, whatever stereotypical, or not even stereotypically, but for me, it wouldn't be my cup of tea. I go like, pow, amazing, amazing little yeah. profile. And this, they, they know how to take pictures. Short. They know how to take pictures. They have like a certain story, story to them. When I say story, I say two sentences. Um, and I'm like, yeah, let's go. Not to say that I've actually done anything with it, but you know, it's just like, it's research, which you're fine. <laughs> but also there are ways, like, it's one thing is a Tinder profile, but the other thing is a Tinder conversation. And one thing I would recommend is I'm part of this Facebook group, it's called, um, Is This How You Flirt? And there people post pictures of terrible Tinder openers and terrible ways of hitting on people and just terrible, like, how to not do Tinder is, is basically what it is. I like, think my weirdest one thus far has been receiving a gift of a track for picking up a roll of hay and okay. the roll of hay looks a lot like a tampon because it's got the string to it so that was the weirdest opener did you, thus did you far say anything thought. alongside that? i was like that was officially the weirdest opener on tinder thus far uh, yeah <laughs> yeah but um i mean i'm guessing you have also probably tried tinder like it's like you've but never been in a relationship with a but... shitty profile though but also okay something i would want to say that's maybe not always what we say but i want to say it anyway is like you've never been in a relationship like how are you in the first few weeks of dating i don't know if you've ever dated but like in the first you know like maybe you've had a date maybe you had a tinder conversation and it hasn't gone somewhere and i'm wondering if it's something about your behaviors as well like we're, we're, we're like we're on the side of our viewers obviously but you might be coming across too strong or like we yes we say like overbearing too keen you whacked out your dick pic within 30 seconds like <laughs> don't, don't ask questions yeah don't ask questions about them don't like i mean yeah find some funny memes send those along like we also have ones we have specific videos about how to do online dating we have specific videos about how to flirt without being a creep these are all things that i would check out as well um yes. with various yeah. of various levels of drunkenness for us so it's like... so it's one thing is like knowing how to use these platforms it's nothing like how are you yourself like comporting yourself socially and because like yeah we say like you know it's the whole we created a monster thing right we say like be open and be honest about what you want what that doesn't mean is saying to someone you on your first date like can we make out in the first 15 minutes yeah because i went on a tinder date once and it was going terribly we had nothing in common i didn't find him attractive it was really bad and at the end of the date he said so can i kiss you and this was me a few years ago, and I was more insecure than I was now. And I was just like, yeah, okay. And I kissed him. 
Okay. I well, you didn't want to. No, I didn't want to. Oh. But I felt like in that scenario, like it, it would be like more shit for me to like have to like. I, I, I felt I felt trapped by that situation the, basically. Okay. And I guess it's terrible. Oh, okay, that's and true. like yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't like and then. <laughs> <laughs> so but um but yeah. So that was like me being put in a really shitty situation by someone. So we also have a lot of videos about reading signals. And like yeah, maybe you're on a Tinder date and maybe things going well, but before you say can I kiss you, you could say, I'm really enjoying this, would you be up to meet again? And see whether she says, Yeah, sure, definitely. How about next yeah. week? Or whether she says, Yeah, maybe Totally. Or like, like, do you think we've clicked? And they go like, yeah, man. Or did they go like, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. Oh, you like video games? I do too. Yeah. So, like, I do not doubt that there is someone for you because there are so many fucking people in this world. But, yeah, and like, so many dickheads are having yeah. an amazing woman all the time. And it's just like, it's yeah. so annoying. But I would say is like, read some, like, feminist stuff about how to, like, be a dude without being a creep and, like, how to hit on people and how to engage in a non like because women are sick of people saying like blah 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 suck my dick or blah 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 dick pic or blah 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 can we make out or uh, but yeah obviously uh, unfortunately uh, it depends <laughs> on who but the point is like depends on the dick okay. <laughs> depends on the dick but also sorry, you know yeah, but you know what it means like yes there are ways of being charming and interesting and cool without whacking your dong out and I don't, I'm not saying you're doing that, but I'm saying that the advice Absolutely. that men give men is often pretty shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, never, never. That's, a, yeah. I think that's advice we will never give. Mm. <laughs> Do it friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because actually that's something that you and me talked about um, with a couple of people in, in, um, in the park after our, uh, I want to say last, no, the first live show. We yeah. were talking about like the shame of Tinder and the shame of hooking up mm. and the fact that only women ha- get that, whereas with dudes, just like, oh, it's scored some. Yeah. And you, yeah, you always have to recognize that like a woman may well come out of a like one night stand situation feeling very differently to you because of the stigma on women having casual sex. Because you are seen as a player and she is totally. seen as a slut. And like, totally. and recognize that. And like, I've talked in a previous video about how uh, one of my boyfriends. Amazing. One of my boyfriends used to, like, the first time we hooked up, like, we slept together, and then next day he said, joining us for lunch, and I was like, oh, oh, right, you don't just want to, like, bang me and leave, and it was such a shock to me, and, like, even if she says no, like, making it not feel like someone has been used and recognising it, even if you're the nicest guy, the coolest guy, you have the most consensual, sexy sex ever, she may well still feel a bit weird the next day because of that stigma that is so hard, so hard to rid yourself of. Mate, like, like I remember you mentioned that, and I was like, oh, but now more than ever, I've just, well, I've seen yeah. that. <laughs> so like, yeah. And also like, if you're, if you're worried about the stigma of being 30 and never had a relationship, like fucking fine. Oh yeah, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. But age is like really, really true, don't give a shit. Do you no. know how many people like go like, oh, I'm 20, I've never had a relationship. Yeah. I was like, so yeah. And also whatever. like, you can be 30 and a half and had a series of like six months long shitty relationships because you're a shitty person. That doesn't make you a better person than you who's ever had one. Like, totally. So, totally. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily bring it up on, a, on your first date. Because, I mean, sure. I just remember I went on the date with this guy and then I was about to hook up with him and he said, I've never had sex before. And I was like, I was, I don't know, maybe this is me being like super problematic, but I was like, I don't like you enough to feel like I should be the one that takes your virginity. Yeah, yeah, that's, And it put that's me in this position, like, and I wish like I would have had sex with him if he hadn't said that. Maybe that's me being super uncool. It possibly is, right? But I didn't feel comfortable I've, taking on that responsibility. I've never, never, I've never had that experience. Yeah, so I, I, I rolled over and decided to go to sleep. But now I'm like, maybe I should have done it because it could have been a really good way for him to have done that but I, I knew I didn't want to see him again and I didn't want to leave him on but it also it put yeah I also wouldn't put it pat okay not to say that this has happened this is your situation but basically fuckboys exist they they also come up with things also just to get a girl so I think there have been certain things that have been told to me that are not necessarily true just to get me but that's the opposite effect <laughs> No, but like they, they, they helped as in like I was like yeah let's go but coming to yeah. coming to think of it like I think they were full of shit <laughs> yeah I was they were like oh and this and that yeah like, yeah yeah it's just so don't do that either like obviously like you don't know to be like hi I'm Bob and I've never had a relationship but also don't lie if you're talking about yeah. exes just be like yeah I've never really had anyone like super meaningful like fine like yeah also valid you're, you're like you're only 30 it's like like a player player a lot of people spend their 20s just fucking around and that's valid too and like never had a relationship it's not a like it's not a stigma and if anyone acts like it's a stigma then don't date them because they sound like an asshole and uh, yeah no i guess 
something to also to be said about like feeling secure in being single and this is like I don't want to go into that like any further I'm just gonna say that I envy you because you seem to have security in yourself something that's whatever issues there are like I I, I struggle with sometimes so um, I think yeah, like a being a, a strong, independent person is 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 is, is a huge um, someone that doesn't have that particular thing to rely on is uh, is, is 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 a huge plus of yours. And, um, but if you are like interested in like you know like aesthetical choices or like how to make yourself be more appealing, we do talk about this from a totally subjective yeah. perspective yeah, in yeah, other yeah, videos. Yeah. Like yeah. if you want like our opinions on this stuff, we have yeah we have covered it. Like. <laughs>